So growing up, I loved, I loved reading. It's part of the reason I eventually became an English teacher, which meant that I loved buying books, and I liked having a lot of books, and I took pride in having a collection of books. There was one point where my mom sold a bunch of books because I had given her permission, and I regretted it so much. And part of that was like, I want to have a classroom someday and I want to have like a library in my classroom where students can pick the books on my shelves. Well, I no longer enjoy having large numbers of my own books in the home. The ones behind me are my fiance's. This is two of like 12 other bookshelves. Um, so those are all his. I'm not really touching what's behind me, but everything in the boxes around me, I want to declutter. But why are they in your apartment, you may ask? I quit my job again. I'm not going to talk a bunch in this video about why I left teaching again, or pretty much not at all. Um, a lot of you who've been watching this channel know that I've left my job before, and it was a really, really bad place, really awful position. Um, and so I had very extraordinary circumstances for leaving. This place um, was not nearly that bad, and you could watch pretty much any teacher's video for why they left teaching in the fall of 2021 and it's my story too. My love has dwindled some. Now I am less intent on owning a bunch of books and more intent on actually reading the ones I have and I want to get back into reading as part of like spending time on myself, kind of getting my life back and I think sort of condensing what I have will help me do that. I have already gotten rid of quite a few books. I'd say about 30, 40 or so, I donated some to the school's library. There's one student who I gave like 10 to 12 books. We did like a 12 day of Christmas thing. And then I had a few students who were actively reading books they checked out from me. And when they learned I was leaving, they were bringing the books back. And I would kind of glance at the book. I would ask them, okay, are you done with it? And most of the time the answer was no, but I want you to have your book back. But like, if it was a book that I didn't really care about and most of them were, um, that I just said go ahead and keep it. They were super excited so I'm glad I did it and yeah so 30 or 40 are already taken care of. So I guess I'll unpack. I'm gonna do sort of the Marie Kondo style where I'm gonna stack up all of them, look at them individually, and separate them like that. Let's spark some joy. So some of these that I, I want to maybe read, but I'm not really sold on reading, I might just go ahead and give them away. And then generally they're going to be classics like Love in the Time of Cholera, and I might just pick them up from the library. I feel like that's a pretty common book. Do a little aesthetic thing where like the spines are facing away from you and I can get a good thumbnail picture right here. That's my goal. Do you like my nails, by the way? Got those done today. Isn't that festive? What am I aspiring to here? Dang it. I will be beautiful. I am beautiful. Means. I figured I'd go through them little by little. And part of my criteria is spark joy. But part of it is also have I read it? Do I want to reread it? Do I want to have it on hand to lend to people? Um, have I not read it yet and I still want to? Have I read it yet but I don't want to anymore? Or do I have like an attachment to it from childhood? Starting off easy, Game of Thrones. I don't have that much interest in reading Game of Thrones anymore. I used to want to. I watched the show except for the last season because I heard it was terrible. Um, and I'm, 
I don't care, I'll put them behind me. On the other hand, in the fantasy realm, the Sword of Shannara do want to read this one. So let's put that on the piano bench. Aragon. Not good writing, but a great story. I need a maybe pile that I can come back to. Are you allowed to get rid of Harry Potter? Was that a millennial question? I don't know. I don't know. Why is this already hard? Maximum ride. I don't care. Nancy Drew saying goodbye. Never read this book. Some of these my mom gave to me. She had them in her classroom. She taught a lower grade than I do, but some of my students were pretty low readers, so they enjoyed that I had easier books. But now I don't want to have them. Okay, I was checking my fiance shelves because I have these copies of Lord of the Rings, but my thing is, it's the actors from the movie and he has copies of Lord of the Rings up there. And so I think I'm gonna get rid of these copies since I don't like them. As much as I love Lord of the Rings, I'm just gonna read his if I wanna reread them. Spinning is Silver, I have not read it and I do want to. Feast of Extraordinary Circumstance, have read it, enjoyed it, probably not gonna read it again. Kids didn't want to borrow books from me as much as I thought they would. I anticipated more readers and I would even do independent reading projects to encourage them to read. Even so, most students would just check out a book, never read it, and yes, fail the project, which was frustrating because it was supposed to be a fun project, or like borrow from the library and not return to them. I only have a handful of students who enjoyed reading. And now I know like the students who want to read in this generation, I know what they're looking for now. And I know that my big shelf mostly has what they're not looking for. And so it's a bit discouraging to have gathered these for so many years and for most students to have no interest in them. So if I go back into teaching, I'll have a much smaller classroom shelf if I have one at all. Um, I'm sure I will if I go back into it, but I'll be a little more conscious of what kids want to read. I need more mystery novels, honestly. I didn't have enough violence on my shelves. Silence in the Age of Noise. I don't think I could ever part with this book. I love this book. I'm not gonna reread Ender's Game. Or Nicholas Sparks. I actually got this from the school's library. They have a free section and I was like, oh, my students will want some romance options. No. There's a reason the school library was giving them away. Song of Achilles. Do want to read this. Nobody's Princess. I read this so many times as a little girl. I loved Helen and I will be keeping it. Mm, the Martian. That's gonna be a maybe pile. The Souls of Black Folk. I've had excerpts of this assigned to me in college, but I haven't ever read the whole thing. And I'd really like to now that like, I don't know, I'm more motivated to read stuff like this now in adulthood when I'm not being told to. Same with Stamped. I have not read it yet and I want to. Nicholas Sparks, Neil Gaiman. It's a good book. Not going to reread it. Atlas Shrugged. That's a beast. If I ever want to read it, there's plenty of copies of Half Price books. Anything by David Sedaris is going to stay. This is my favorite author who is still alive. His books are scattered in the stack. There's Calypso, um, Death by Finding. I, I love this man. I'm keeping his books. It's kind of a bigger stack than I expected. Where did you go, Bernadette? I liked it, but I'm not gonna keep it. In Defense of Food. I love this one. Zen in the Art of Writing. If this isn't nice, what is? Good stuff. Fast Food Nation read half of it, gave up on it. That is a picture of my dad with a note from my sister. Maybe I should be checking these for sentimental bookmarks. Mere Christianity, I like it. I'm going to ask my fiance if he has a copy and if he does, I'll probably get rid of it. So my aunt lent me this book. I should probably get it back to her. It's called She's Got the Wrong Guy, Why Smart Women Settle. At the time, this was a very apt read. Ah, Nobody's Prize, the sequel to Nobody's Princess. Yeah. The Kite Runner, good writing, made me sick to my stomach. Stamped from the beginning, another one that I have not read yet. The Thorn Birds, this copy is very beat up. This was my mom's. Um, I loved this book, actually. I am Malala. I did teach this whole book to my sophomores last year. Every time I called two names, we'd be reading and we'd pause. I'd call two names. The first one would summarize for me what we just read. And the second one would ask a level two or three question. Eventually, 
the summaries all went to the same kid. He volunteered for this and he would summarize it properly, but he would put like a yeehaw, like country cowboy twist. They paid attention. Oh, Vanity Fair. I wish I had a prettier copy of this. I love Vanity Fair. This type of book speaks to me, man. Symptoms of being human. Great book, not gonna reread it. The Man Who Was Thursday, one of the first classic books that I loved in high school. I'm gonna keep that one. Keeping more than I thought I would. And like, I always think if I were to move, like I know which ones I'd probably further declutter, but you know, I'm not moving right now. Okay, Heart of Darkness, absolutely not. Jane Eyre. This was a gift and I am keeping it. It's a good book too. I'm gonna speed it up a little. I'll pause and tell you about a book if I'm keeping it, but besides that, I'm just gonna start removing them. Kafka on the Shore. I really wanna read this one. So I'm gonna keep it. Um, from the same friend who gave me Jane Eyre. This place, 150 years retold. I have not read it yet and it looks wonderful. So I'm keeping that. Fiance got me a book, it's gonna be hard to get rid of it. So I keep it. The Overstory. It looks so beautiful and it sounds so lovely. I wanna read it. Ovid Metamorphosis. I was supposed to read this in college and I didn't. And I still got an A in that class, but I'm in my master's now and I think I'm actually supposed to read this next semester and I'd like to, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to some of my Greek literature. Don't know. Do you get rid of Harry Potter? I'm gonna get rid of this one, but it's a good time. I read this for my um, contemporary African fiction class. It's called The Whale Caller. This man is sexually attracted to whales and like only eats mac and cheese. It's a good time. I've been told I need to read this one, so I shall. Digital minimalism. I'm going to keep this one and maybe make a video about it. This channel is like based off minimalism, so if you want that, let me know. Ah, Dracula. I want a cooler copy of Dracula, but I loved it. So I think I want to get like a prettier cover now that I've read the academic version with all of the like notes and all that. I don't think I'll keep the Aragon series actually. If I see like a really pretty copy, I might grab it. That's what I want to do. I've read a lot of books and I want to keep reading books but I don't want to own a lot of books. Like I wanna be able to read a book and not just have them pile up in my life. And so maybe when I really love a book or like I'm really excited about it, I'll let myself get like a nice pretty copy that I'll keep and everything else, do it through the library or buy a cheap copy and then move it along like in one of those um, like little libraries where you exchange books. Oh, that could work for me. really classic old books that are super long like they were paid by the page and so you you knew that character from top to bottom or like the really weird experimental ones I like those an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green so I let a senior student borrow my copy of the book when I was student teaching and he had it open in science and the science teacher had a rabbit and the rabbit bounced across the table, 
peed on the book and went on its merry way and the student felt terrible the science teacher felt terrible and i was like it's fine and i asked him like is rabbit pee toxic like can i keep the book and he was like yeah i guess if you want to but then the science teacher bought me a new copy and wrote on the inside with apologies from the rabbit and i love that i'm keeping this tim do you have a copy of the hobbit what about mere Christianity? Uh, somewhere. The Hobbit's up there. I mean, mine's all marked up. I'm an idiot. I like to mark the books, but... Well, you had a... You can put that back. Thank you. You had a section for books that are, like, modern, popular Christian yeah, books. I think they're over there. there. It's not in my room. I know. Well, you can put it up there. I don't need it. Do you have the Canterbury Tales? I do not. Oh, perfect. Oh, and that's a prettier copy, too. <coughs> yeah, I'll get rid of mine then. I'm upset because there's another volume that goes in this set, and I lent it out to someone and never got it back, and I've never been able to buy the exact kind to make the set full again. That's why lending books is evil. Lending books is evil? Lending books is evil. Lending books is evil. Do you have the Aragon series? No. Okay. There we have it books that I am keeping. Good number. I'm sure not all of them will stick around. There they are. What'd you think, little boy? And then we have the books I am getting rid of. Definitely over half of them. Um, I will count them and put somewhere on the screen what number out of what number that I'm getting rid of. I hope you liked judging my taste in books. I hope you enjoyed this decluttering video. Maybe it inspired you to declutter or to read more. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.